implemented in the transport layer. UDP, TCP, and SCTP, the Stream Control Transfer Protocol. Right. Anyway, we are not covering the SCTP. We are covering the, covering the two important ones, the UDP and the TCP. Right. So this, these two protocols basically ensures that your data gets transferred reliably, correctly, without errors from one machine to another machine, from one transport layer to the other transport layer on the other side. And uh, this is basically the ports. So the port numbers, remember in transport layer you have port numbers. Each port number is related to a particular service. right? And the service might be provided either using UDP or TCP service. Right, packets. So, for example, uh, the one you're familiar with, let's say, let's say uh, HTTP. HTTP service runs on port 80, and HTTP service is normally only uses U TCP protocol, right? Not, not UDP. Some other ones, for example, uh, which one you're familiar with? FTP also uses TCP, Telnet uses TCP. Uh, other ones, maybe like Echo services, only use a UDP, right? So it depends on the service. So some services are, have both options, whether you want to use UDP or you want to use, you want to use TCP, right? Whether you want reliability or not. If you want reliab reliability, use TCP. If you do not want reliability, you use UDP. All right? That's why it is. So anyway, you don't, don't, have, don't have to memorize this table. Right, it's just to show you the, the relationship between the ports, the services, and the types of protocols to which they are normally associated with. Alright, so we go to the first one, the UDP. Now UDP is very, very simple. Right? UDP basically is connectionless. Right? Connectionless basically, as we saw last time, means that you send packets without informing the other side. Right? So the client will send UDP packets to the server without just send. Whether the server is running or not, nobody knows. Right? Whether the server is congested, nobody knows. And we, and we don't care actually. We just send. That's connectionless. Right? So it's unreliable. It is very simple. And little overhead because we do not communicate with the, the other side before we transmit data. Right? Just send, 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 send. If we're lucky, the other side will be alive and we respond back. If not, Never mind, we'll try again. All right? So, that, so that's UDP, right? It gives you a process to process communication. That's the, 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 that is the job of the transport layer protocol anyway. All right? So UDP means, because this is a protocol, means it has a specific packet format. So when you send data using UDP, means that the packet, the data has, has, must be put into a, into a UDP packet, which is a fixed format. Right? So the format of a UDP packet looks like this. Right? There's one header and then the data, whatever you send. Right? The header basically 8 bytes normally and the data can be either 0 or more. All right? The data can be empty. You can, send an empty. you can send a UDP packet which contains no data. All right? Just like I give you, a, I send data to you on a piece of paper, but the piece of paper is blank. I send you a packet, right? So, header is fixed size, 8 bytes. So the maximum packet size in UDP is 65,535 bytes, right? The total size of it. Minimum, minimum size of UDP will be 8 bytes, which means the header must be, always must be there. Right? That's how it recognizes that this is a UDP packet. Now the header consists of four fields. This particular one consists of four attributes. So you must say it's the source port number, who is sending, which, what, what is the port number of the sender? And what is the port number of the destination? Remember the transport layer works only in port numbers. You only communicate in port numbers. You only know port numbers. Right? The IP address will be given by the, by the network layer which is below it. Not, so IP address is not the concern of transport layer. It only works with port, port addresses. So if we need to say who is, what is the sending port number and what is the receiving port number, 
Then we say the length. What is the total length of this packet we are sending? Means how much data do we put in? All right? And then there'll be a checksum. Checksum is your CRC, right? For error control. All right? So this is so this these are the important information that must be in the header itself. All right? So for example, this is our UDP header. Right? And normally well, if you look at the header, the, the contents are normally in hexadecimals. Right? It's normally written in hexadecimal format. So how big is our our header is basically eight bytes. Right? Eight bytes means thirty-two bits. Hey, sorry. Sorry, 60, 64 bits, right? Eight times eight. Sixty-four bits, all right? So if you break up into hexadecimal, then this is what it is. So let's say this is our 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 example for a UDP header. So, how do how we divide it? The first four bytes, or the first, sorry, the first two bytes. The first two bytes is is the port number, all right? The first two bytes, the port number. First sixteen bits is port number. Second sixteen bits is the destination port number. The third sixteen bits is the length, and the last sixteen bits is the checksum. All right. So 16 bits, if you break down into hexadecimal, it will be four hexadecimal numbers. We call it four hexadecs, right? So the first four hexadecimal numbers correspond to 16 bits because one hexadecimal number corresponds to four bits, isn't it? You should know this, right? Right. So. So if, so if the, given this is the header, then we can identify the source port number is the first four hexadecimal numbers, which is CB84, all right? So you want to convert this to decimal, we just CB84 base 16 or hexadecimal, you convert to, by, uh, do we convert to, hex, to, to, to decimal, it becomes 52,100. So mean this is the source port number, right? The destination port number is the next four hexadecimal digits, right? Zero 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 D, and we convert when we convert them into decimal, we get thirteen, right? So we are sending this packet from port fifty two thousand one hundred to port number thirteen, right? Then the total length of the length of the datagram is is indicated in the in the third sequence of hexadecimal digits, right? So 001C, which is equivalent to 28 bytes. So what it means is that the UDP packet, the total size of this UDP packet is 28 bytes. So how much data do we have in this packet? We remove the, we subtract the header. Header is 8 bytes, right? So 28 bytes is this whole thing. And header is 8 bytes, so the remaining must be 20 bytes. Right, so that's why that's where our data length is basically twenty bytes. Right? Then is the packet traveling from which way it is going? Is it going from client to server or server to client? Which way is it going? How do we know? Right? So we look at the port number. Fifty two thousand and thirteen. If you remember the port numbers last time, if you look at this table here. Port number 13 is in the list, right? Port number 52,000, is it in the list? No. Why is it not in the list? If you remember the table we saw last week that, that port numbers above 40, 42,000 are called dynamic port numbers, right? They are dynamically assigned when a client needs to send data to the server. The server will use these well-known ports to advertise their service. Otherwise, they won't know. All right? So in this case, we know that now, the 13 is a well-known port. So well-known port means it must be associated with a, a service. It must be on, on, on a server. The 52,000 is a dynamic port number. That means this must be the client. So therefore, this packet is going from client to server. Right, by looking at the port number. 
All right? And what is this, 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 this process, the client trying to communicate? Then you look at the port service. 13 is the daytime service. Means that client is asking the server, what time is it on your, on your, on your machine? The, client, the server will reply, this is the time on my machine. Right? It's a daytime service. It's basically a checking time on the server. That's why it is. All right, so just looking at the UDP header, you can actually get a lot of information. Right, who's sending to whom? What is the size of the, how much data is being sent, and so on. Right. So UDP services again, since this transport layer service, it's providing uh, it's basically process to process communication, as we mentioned earlier. That's transport layer uh, protocol anyway. User socket addresses means the IP address plus port numbers are both will be used. It's connectionless. UDP service is connectionless, as mentioned earlier. So datagrams are sent independently. Each packet is independent. There's no connection between one packet and the, and the next packet. Right? So they are not numbered. You have data, you send. You have data, you send. They are not related at all. And second thing is the data you send must fit into the packet. So what is the size of a packet? 65,000 bytes. All right? So if your data larger than that, you cannot send. It must be chopped off. And only it can accommodate this size of a packet, this size of data into the packet. So UDP services is limited in that sense. UDP transport protocol is limited in the sense that it can only send a fixed amount of data at one go. If more than that, you have to chop it up. You will lose it. Right? So it does not it does not break up the data into different Protocol. You see, if I have 1,000, if, if I have, if I have, say, 100,000 bytes to send, 1K to 100,000 bytes to send, I can say, okay, put the 65,000 in first packet and then the remaining one next packet. No, it doesn't work that way. Right? UDP will not allow that. No flow control, as you mentioned earlier, right? No error control. The sender does not know whether the receiver has received that packet correctly. And if there is an error also, the, the, the receiver simply throws away. So it does not reply, say, please send back and all that. No such thing. All right? And of course, no congestion control. It does not try to, uh, try to uh, make sure that there is no congestion or try to avoid traffic and all these things. Uh, heavy traffic, no, it doesn't do all these things. Very simple. So who uses UDP services? As shown in the table earlier, echo service, daytime service, DNS. Right? DNS, remember? When, uh, say, this machine starts up, it doesn't have its IP address, it needs to get IP address from a DNS server. So this machine will send a, a UDP packet right, to the DNS server and say, please give me address. Please give me IP address. Then the DNS server will reply to this machine and say, okay, I put the IP address in the, in the data, data part of the UDP packet. Here you go. Then this will get, receive the IP address and as, as a data. Again, using UDP service, right? DHCP, DNS, DHCP, SNMP. Remember this one, RIP, right? We saw how the how the routers exchange information, exchange their routing routing tables between one another. So how do this? How do they exchange information by using UDP packets also? All right. The main thing is that the packets you send are not important, right? If you get lost, doesn't matter. We will send again. Right? There's no reliability built into it. Okay. All right. So UDP, that's it. That's all. all right? Because it's very, very simple. Now, TCP, on the other hand, tries to, to, to give more flexibility and more reliability built into the protocol itself. Right? So first of all, TCP is connection-oriented. As we mentioned last week, connection-oriented means that before the client sends data to the, to the server, it must establish connection. It tries to check out whether the server is alive, whether the server is running. And then inform the server that I'm going to send you data, are you ready to receive? Only once the server says, yes, I'm ready to receive, then it starts sending data. And after that, when you send data, it must be acknowledged. I, I must wait for confirmation, must make for, wait that all data has been received correctly to the other side. If not, means I retransmit. And at the, at, at the end, I must say, okay, I'm, I'm finished sending data. 
let's close connection or please close connection. Right? So there is various steps involved, which all these things doesn't happen in UDP. Right? So this connection oriented. So it, it defines three phases of connection using TCP. So connection establishment, as mentioned earlier, data transfer, and then the determination itself. So it goes in three stages. So TCP is reliable compared to UDP, and it uses a combination of go back end and selective request protocols. So we've seen the example last week, how they actually treat, how they handle acknowledgements, how they handle sequence numbers and all these things. So this is what is what being used. And TCP is also full duplex, right? Remember the piggybacking, piggy banks, right? That means you can send data and send acknowledgement at the same time. UDP is only one way. When I send data, it's only one way, there's no acknowledgement anyway, right? In UDP, there's no, no acknowledgement, you just send data, send data, send data. Right? You don't wait for acknowledgement. So here, it can be done in duplex, full duplex. So I send you data, you send me data. When you send me data, you also reply to the earlier data which, which, you, which you receive, right? That's how it works. And TCP is the most commonly used protocol in the internet applications. All right, as you as you see in the table earlier, most of them will use UDP. Uh, most of them will use TCP because it's reliable. Right? The only problem is that it's slightly more sophisticated. It takes if you if you want to do your own, your own, it's slightly more complex compared to UDP. All right, so let's go through some of the things, some of the features of TCP. Right, so TCP basically works. So-called in 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 a, in a way, in so-called stream delivery, meaning that once the the sender and the receiver has established connection, right? You can assume that the sender and receiver are connected by a pipe, some kind of like a tube. Then the sender after that will put the data into this tube, and then everything will be automatically reach the other side. Right? As long as the TCP connection is open, this tube or this pipe will be there. So the process here, the sending process, we just simply just write the data into this particular tube or pipe, and then it will be delivered the other side. And receiving side, just read from the pipe. Right? So once the TCP establishes that, the connection, this tube will be become available. Right? That's how it works. It makes things seem simple. Right? So all these things will be done during the uh, connection establishment phase. The first phase, this stream will be actually will be established. Right? After that, it becomes very, very simple. And TCP uses buffers, circular buffers. You remember this one too? Right? We're talking about how the, the, the window, uh, the sliding window. Right? So both the receiver and sender using circular sliding windows. Right? So the, the process, the sending process will put the data into the, into, the, into the buffer, into the circular buffer. And then the window is the one which is blue and uh, green. Right? So that's how big it is. So what the, what the sender will do, it will find what empty slots in the buffer, and then it will put, put the data into the buffer. Write the data into the, into the buffer, which is empty, empty slots. And this buffer will spin clockwise, right? And then this 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 buffer has already been this slot has already been sent out, and this next one will be sent onto the stream, right? So take one one of them, send. Take one of them, send. Take this is how TCP will do. All right? And then and then it will reuse the space again. On the receiving side, again same thing. Right? Once the packet comes, is received, it will put again into an empty, empty, empty slot. And then the reader will be reading from the, from the beginning of the sliding window. Read one by one, and it's, as you finish reading, it will move the sliding window one position. Right? So that it creates the space again. Right? So this again will spin. Okay. And uh, now here, in this sense, TCP provides 
segments, right? So the segments basically means that you can put data. Multi when data is large, we can chop it up into smaller uh, chunks or smaller groups. Each group, each, of, each group of data can be put into one TCP packet, right? And it will be numbered, right? Each one, each packet, TCP packet will have its own header, but the packets can be linked, will be numbered and say, okay, I'm sending you uh, 200, 200 uh, K of data and uh, TCP can only give you, can send you send 20, 20, uh, uh, 200 bytes one time, okay, we'll chop it up, small, 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 and then I will number them and tell you how many packets you will receive and make sure you receive all of them, right? And the packets can be different size, not necessarily to be the same size, right? It can be small, big, or whatever it is, but there's a maximum limit to it, right? So it can be of different size, and then uh, basically that it can be, the whole data can be grouped together in terms of sequence of numbers. So this is where you come in, right? So the sequence numbers. The so TCP employs sequence numbers. UDP, no sequence numbers. Because you're always sending one packet which is independent. It's not related to the next packet at all. So TCP can send a, a, a group of packets which can be numbered, right? So the sequence number here, in TCP, the sequence number, how we put the sequence number is basically we, we number the bytes in the packet. So for example, look at this way, right? Let's say the, look, look at this example, right? The first sequence number, we're gonna start with, with 10,001, all right? We, are, we need to send 5,000 bytes. Our first sequence number is 10,001, and our packets, our segments can only carry 1,000 bytes each time. So we will need to send five TCP segments, all right? So the first segment, the sequence number will start with the first one, 10,001, because this is the, the initial sequence number, okay, fine. So segment, num segment one's starting number is 10,001, meaning that it contains 1,000 bytes of data, okay? So data is from 10,001 until 11,000, right? Data bits. Second segment, the sequence number will be 11,001, meaning that it, it informs that this is the, the next byte, right? The byte means that between this number and this number, the 1,000 bytes has been delivered, right? So the sequence number is basically keeps track of how many bytes has been sent by the packets, right? So it starts with 11,000. That means basically 10,000 plus 1,000. 10,001 is the starting position. We are sending 1,000 bytes in each packet. So therefore, if we put all the packets in, uh, all the data, all the bytes in, then our sequence number for the next segment will be the, ne the next byte number, which will be 11,001. Right, again, 1,000, 1,000, so the last one will be like this, right? So we don't sequence number one, two, three, four, we don't put that, right? We, we number, the sequence number is basically the byte position of the data itself, right? So initial sequence number can be, I start from zero, or it can be any, any, any starting number, it doesn't matter. So in this example, the starting number is 10,001. So it doesn't, matter, it doesn't really matter. So since you have sequence numbers, and this is a reliable service, means that TCP must also have acknowledgements, right? And so acknowledgements will also be numbered, right? So since it uses go back n protocol, right? So that means the acknowledgement number is basically cumulative, right? So it will receive multiple segments, TCP segments, and then one acknowledgement will, will, uh, will indicate what are the previous, all the previous TCP segments which it, had, it has received, right? So acknowledgement number is basically to confirm the data bytes received. It def also defines the next, next byte of data expected to receive, right? So for example, we send one to 1,000 bytes, right? So the acknowledgement will be Acknowledgement, 1001, meaning that the, the, the receiver will say, okay, please, I will receive all your data. Please send me data beginning from 1001, 
That means anything before 1001 has been received correctly. That's, assum that's the assum assumption of the cumulative here. Right? So let's say we receive acknowledgement number 5643. It means all bytes received from the beginning up to 5642 has been received correctly, right? safely. But it does not mean that 5642 bytes has been received because the initial sequence number may not be zero. Right? It just tells you from the beginning we have received all the bytes received until that particular number. Right? And, and the next byte expected to receive will be indicated in the acknowledgement number. Right? So the TCP packet looks something like this. Again, the packet contains two parts, the header and the data. Right? Very, again, the same principle. Except that now the header of TCP packet is slightly larger. UDP was only 8 bytes, only contains 4 fields, right? because there is no reliability, no sequence number, no, no acknowledgement, nothing. But here, because TCP employs extra features, so the header will become slightly more complex. So the header contains this, all these fields. So it has the source port number, right? destination port number, again same as UDP. Then we have a sequence number, right? which is 32 bits, acknowledgement number, right? because you, you can send, when you send data for this particular sequence, I can also acknowledge the previous data I received from you, right? because we are doing full duplex, the piggy banking concept. Then this H length basically indicates what's the length of our whole packet. All right? And then these are reserved bits, we don't check them. Then there are a few flags which we will take a look later. Then there's a window size, right? The sliding window. So when a pack, when TCP seg segment sends, it also indicates to the other side, when I send a TCP packet to you, I also tell you how much data I can receive from you. What is the size of data I am willing to receive? So this is the window size here. So if I put 1000 here, that means I'm, I'm, I, I can receive 1000 bytes from you. I have enough space in my buffer to receive 1000 bytes from you. Don't send me more, don't send me more than 1000, that's what he's saying. All right? Then there's a checksum, the CRC, then some urgent pointer, and then some ex extra things. All right? Now there is, uh, so this flags here, this five, this uh, six flags here, in the middle here. So you can mark the packet as urgent, right? If you want to mark it as urgent, we will put it, so we will put here, make it urgent, set this particular bit to one. If, if, if our packet, we are sending it as acknowledgement, right? We are not sending data, we only acknowledgement. Then we will set this particular flag to one. Meaning that we say, okay, now we are, now we are sending acknowledgement. So ignore other things, right? Whatever in content here doesn't matter because we need acknowledgement, right? There's also a push. We will take, take, take a this look later. There's a reset, synchronization, synchronize, synchronize uh, sequence numbers, and also to terminate the connection. So this this we will look at it later on. Right. Let's uh, take a quick look of uh, how we, how the TCP connection is ongoing between the client and the server. All right. By using this, this how the how the how the TCP packets are exchanged between the client and server during the data communication. All right. So first one is let's say we have client and server. So between client and server, who will initiate who will initiate the conversation or traffic? Who shall start it? Client or the server? Client or server? Of course, client, right? Server is always running something. Client want to talk, client must, must initiate connection. So that means the client must try to establish connection with the server and wait for server to say yes before you can start sending data. All right? So this is the first phase, connection establishment. So the connection establishment is called a three-way handshaking procedure means that there are three packets exchanged between the client and server to establish the connection. Right? After this, this handshaking, 
After these three packets are exchanged, only then the data can be transferred. All right? So what do you do? Is that the client will send a synchronization packet to the server. So you mark it as S, right? The, the flag S will be set here, this one. Say that I'm sending you a synchronization packet. And my sequence number is 8000. So the client is saying to the server, my sequence number is 8000. I'm sending you synchronization, meaning I'm, I'm, I'm giving my hand to, for you to, I'm opening my hand to, for you for handshaking. I offer my hand, right? Now the server will respond. Server will respond with acknowledgement. Say, okay, yes, I, I received your packet, and I'm also offering you my handshake. Also synchronization, right? And now what? This is your sequence number. You send me sequence number 8,000. Mean that I must reply to you that I have received your 8,000 correctly. So I must do what? I must acknowledge it. So I send you acknowledgement. Acknowledgement will be the sequence number plus one. Because it means that whatever packet received before 8,001 has been received correctly. And the next packet you send me must be 8,001. That's what the, client, the server is telling to the client. All right? Now, the server also has its own sequence number. So, it is okay. So, sync, so, server will inform the client, hey, my sequence number is 15,000. If you send me data afterwards, make sure you use, use this sequence number. Right? That's what he's saying. And then, server also says that, okay, my receive window size, my receiving... Uh, sliding window size is 5,000. So don't send me data more than 5,000 bytes. Otherwise, I cannot sell. This is my buffer size. Right? So I send you, so it, it sends synchroniz client sends synchronization, the server responds with acknowledgement plus its own synchronization. So two things are sent together. This, this is where the piggy bank comes in, the full duplex. All right? So now, the client receives this thing. It is, once it receives a synchronization, it must reply. Just like you say, it receives a client send synchronization, the server must reply. Now the client receives the synchronization from the server, so it must also reply. So therefore, now the client will reply. Right? So the client will reply. So earlier the sequence number was 8000, so the next one will be 8001, which is correct. And it follows this also because the server says, your next data must be 8001, okay? My next sequence is 8001, which is correct. Because 8000, 8001, right? The next one. Now, the client will say, ah, okay, I acknowledge your packet you send, and I acknowledge 15001, right? Because you send me 15000, I say, okay, now I acknowledge that, means your next packet you send me from the server to the client must be 15001. And we mark the A, Flag means this is only acknowledgement, right? And then the client will also indicate its window size is 10,000, right? So once these three packets are exchanged, so once this packet is sent here and rec clients receive acknowledgement, means that now connection is open. The client can start sending data because he knows that server has, it, server is ready. The server will only open the connection once you received the, the, the final part of the handshaking. Right? Once you received this acknowledgement, then the server is ready to receive the packets from client. Right? So that's the three-way handshaking procedure, we call it. All right? So this is a summary. Right? So the syn segment, synchronization segment, does not carry data. Right? It's only a synchronization, handshaking. And it uses one sequence number. Right? So even though you put, you put data into the, even though you put some, something into the data, it will be ignored. Right? Because this is synchronization. You don't look at it. The synchronization plus acknowledgement, again, carry, does not carry any data. Again, consumes one sequence number. The acknowledgement segment, if not carrying data, it does not consume sequence number. Right? Why? Because when 
this synchronization, it must be acknowledged. Server send synchronization, I must acknowledge. But when you, see, when you receive acknowledgement, you don't acknowledge the acknowledgement. Right? So therefore, you do not have to reply. So no sequence number is consumed. Right? So acknowledgement by itself does not incre increment the sequence counter. Because you do not, you do not have to reply to sequen uh, acknowledgements. Right? So that's the reason. Okay. Now, the second part. So now, the connection has been established between a client and a server. Client connection is open, is ready to send or receive. And then, server also, connection open, ready, or rece ready to receive or send. All right. So now, the data transfer can take place. So connection established has been done. Now, the, now data, data can, can be transferred. So the client is sending data now. It takes, it puts the data into, the, into a TCP packet. Again, now, Remember the sequence numbers, what, what was the previous sequence number? 8001, right? The server says, next packet you send me 8001. Okay, I send you 8001, but this is acknowledgement. And it does not use up the sequence number. So the sequence number for the next data will be the same. Right? Okay? So this is my sequence number 8001, and I'm sending you data from 8000. I'm sending you 1,000 bytes of data, all right? Put it into this, eh? and the acknowledgement number is the one, the previous one is still the same, right? 15,001, because I'm still responding to this one. No new package has arrived from the server. So this acknowledgement still remains the same. Right, and now, so acknowledgement flag is set, and now we set the P flag. Right? What this P flag will do is that once the packet is arrived at the destination, the server, that packet will be quickly uh, read and the data extracted and th the data will be passed on to the, the process. Means that you don't have to wait until all the packets arrive in the sequence before you pass the data to the process. You push the data, you want the data to be pushed to the process as soon as possible, right? That's what the, this, 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 the push flag is, right? Ensure the data in segment is delivered to the process as soon as it, as it is received without waiting for any more data in other segments, right? Okay, anyway, doesn't matter. So now we send one packet, and then we send another packet. Now it's sequence number 8001, the next sequence number is 9001, because we sent 1000 bytes here. Right? So it automatically increment. Acknowledgement is still the same because we have not heard anything from the, we have not heard any reply from the server yet. Right? Again, same thing. Now the server will the server will send a acknowledgement. Right? So server acknowledge what? It will acknowledge all of its cumulative acknowledgement. So the server will acknowledge. So we will acknowledge 8,000, 8,000 to 9,000 here, 9,000 to 10,000. So it, it says that, okay, the next packet you send me must be sequence number of 10,001. So all data up to 10,000 has been received correctly. That's what he's saying. All right, so next one you send me must be 10,001. So all this, both packets has been acknowledged by using one, one, one acknowledgement. Right? And then the server also sends its own, continue with its own sequence number, right? 15,001, it sends 15,001. Now, again, it still keeps sending the uh, sliding window size and say this is acknowledgement, right? At the same time, it sends its own data, right? So the server also sends data together with the acknowledgement. So now, once data arrives, then the, the, the client will actually acknowledge this data. Right, so what's the data? It sends sequence number 15,001, and there were 2,000 bytes of data. Therefore, I will say acknowledge 17,001. Right, so all packets, all data until 17,000 has been received correctly. And the next byte of data you send me must be 17,001. All right, and the sequence number of this will continue. 8,000 I sent, 1,000 here, 1,000 here, so the next one will be 
10,000. So that's my next 10,001, the sequence number of the client. And this is only an acknowledgement. Right? So we send, send data and it will be acknowledged, replied. And the server can also send data together with the acknowledgement. That's why it is. That's why the full duplex is. Right? So after this thing is over, then we try to terminate the connection. Right? So to terminate the connection, again, there's some kind of handshaking involved. Right? Exchange of packets. But the packets are different now. So now we send a packet with a flag F, finish. Right? We're sending a packet saying this is, we are finishing the termination. So we send the packet number F, and then the server will reply with acknowledgement. Okay? I, I acknowledge your, your termination, and I also want to terminate. I also send you my finish packet. And then the client again must acknowledge. Right? So, so you say you want to, client says I want to close connection, server says okay, I accept your offer, but I also want to close connection. That's why server send, also send the F packet. Then the client replies, okay, I accept your. So once it is received, the client connection will close here, and then the server connection will close here. So now, after this, both connections are closed. No, no, no one else can transmit data anymore between them. Right? So we, we call this the three-way handshaking, or we call it the full, full close. Right? But there is also a half close. It means that only one side closed the connection. Right? Well, how it works is that the client sends a termination request, the finish, the F packet, and the server, what it replies, it only replies acknowledgement. So, client say, I want to close connection. The server say, okay, I accept. But I did not say, I want to close connection. Right? So the server did not close its connection yet. It only accepted the request to close from the client side. Okay? So once the client close, means that the client side is, is, is cannot send data. But the server side can still send data to the client. The client can still receive. Right? But server uh, client cannot send out only. So we call it a half close. Right? Until, until some time where the server says, OK, now I'm done with my business. I also want to close. So we, now the, the server sends the F, F packet. Now the, the client must acknowledge. So once this is received, now the server is closed also. Right? So either you do half means you do two, one sequence here and one sequence here, or you, do, you can do it together. You can merge this and this together. You feel an acknowledgement can be put together, right? As something like this here. Then with three packets, you can close both connections at the same time. Okay? Right, so this is the summary, right? So we have the, the three packets exchanged for, for connection establishment, then the, then the data transfer takes place, then you require either three packets or four packets to close the, the, pack, the, the, the connection also. All right, finally, I just want to go through one more. Now, related to this, if you look at this, if a, a client, if a, if a server receives a synchronization packet, it must respond to it, right? If I'm the server, you say you, you request, you say you want open connection, I say, okay, fine. I accept your I accept connection and I reply to you. That means I'm now I, I'm 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 creating this particular pipe, right? So you go back to here. Each time it sets the connection, it will create this, this kind of pipe between the client and the server. Right? So once the packet Connection is established, it, it creates a spike. Another client comes, you also want to establish connection, okay, this server will, will create a pipe with that, that particular client. Right? Now what happens is that this can be abused. Right? So in a way that, let's say a malicious attacker sends large amounts of synchronizing segments to server, all using fake IP address. So the server receives all this send requests, and then you will try to reply. When you reply, because it's a fake IP address of the client, it will get lost along the way. It will not reach. But the, but the server assumes that 
it's okay. It's already connect. You already created those 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 pipes, right? The streams. So it's basically make, making use. Uh, it's using the memory of the server now. So if, let's say if you have one thousand or ten thousand scene requests coming into the server, that means it will create ten thousand streams, right? And if all these are fake. And if the 10,000 streams creating, you, you, you use up all the memory of RAM of the server, when a real connection, when the client comes in, want to connect, I cannot create new connection because not enough RAM. Right? So this is what happens. This is what, this is what basically the, the, the DOS attack, denial of service attack is. Right? You bombard the server with all these requests for connection uh, packets. I send SYN packet, SYN packet, SYN packet, but you don't actually establish connection. You don't actually send data to it. You just keep connecting it, right? So server basically waits for, waits for acknowledgement from each fake client. It does not arrive, right? Remember the, the three-way handshake? The server replies, but this one does not come. So you wait and wait and wait. It cannot release the, 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 the memory, right? If you do it very fast, then it will, it will add up, it will, it will eat up on the RAM and all that. Okay, so we'll stop here then.